and we will discuss uh, this uh, important topic with the fo following panel members. Professor Mark Brown from Dublin City University, who is also Eden Executive Committee member. Michael Gable from European University Association. Michael is not here today with us, but uh, sent us his video record with a presentation. Dr. Yasmin Djabarian, Hochschul Forum Digitalisierung and from Spieferverband, together with Martin Rademacher from the same organization, Hochschul Forum Digitalisierung, but also German Rector's Conference. Please join us in the video format, uh, Yasmin and Martin. Elena Calderola from University of Pavia, Italy, also Eden Executive Committee member. Giuseppe Pirlo, I hope he is with us. Uh, Professor Giuseppe Pirlo, Deputy Director of Third Mission Outreach, University of Bari. Sandra Cucina Softic, Eden President from Sirce, University of Zagreb, Croatia. Andra Schutz from Eden, Eden Secretary General from Hungary. And Professor Margarita Teresavicene from Evidotas Magnus University, who is also Eden Fellow. So thank you very much for joining with your cameras. And uh, in this panel of today, uh, we will also uh, broadcast the panel to Lidium Network, Lithuanian Distance and E-Learning Association Network, who is a partner of this webinar and uh, also organizes European Distance Learning Week events in Lithuania. And I announced the panel members and you can also see the brief descriptions of the honorary panel members at European Distance Learning Week website, also briefly here in my slides. And uh, we will focus today on the questions that we will discuss uh, to see how digital learning opens new ways for society members to start early careers on global scale, uh, to seek for the possibilities to re-enter higher education at different stages of life, to seek for requalification uh, in a variety of forms available today. Digital and network society is the new target group for higher education institutions. And uh, therefore, they learn in new, timeless, and wordless spaces. Such society members are always connected and online, sharing and co-creating knowledge, developing and co-authoring innovations themselves. They may serve as the biggest driving force for higher education today, but also for quite a challenge to deal with. So we will discuss today what is the offer of digital learning for higher education curriculum in Europe, how is digitalization positioned in terms of higher education innovations in Europe, how far did higher education advance with the uptake of digitalization in Europe, and how high the education institutions need to be supported in this way. We have today good practice examples introduced by Germany and Italy. We will discuss how digital curriculum in higher education developed through the years and what is the added value of digital learning and teaching today and which are the key trends in digital learning for research and discussion now that higher education cannot avoid and how they may affect university of tomorrow. And finally, we will see how digital learning may support higher education curriculum transformation in meeting the digital and network society of today. By this, I open the panel and invite the first <laughs> panel speaker, Professor Matt Brown from Dublin City University, to address the first question. Well, thank you very much, Irina. Um, hopefully, I'm coming through nice and clear for you. 
this is an interesting question for us to engage with initially, uh, following closely on the heels last week in Dublin of the World Conference on Online Learning. Um, I think a question like what is the offer of digital learning for HE or higher education curriculum in Europe, or to rephrase, uh, why is digital learning relevant for curriculum transformation in higher education, really begs um, a number of actually sub-questions. Each of the terms actually need us to give a little bit more consideration. So in this brief opening few comments to set the stage, I want to just ask some further questions of that main question. What do we mean, for example, by the term curriculum? What do we mean by transformation? And also, what do we mean by digital learning? So I'll address each of those questions. I don't have necessarily absolutely abundantly clear answers, but sometimes the question is the answer. Firstly, um, what do we mean by curriculum? I think it's very important um, in the way that you're viewing the screen at the moment. The term curriculum in English is written with a small c. Sometimes it's written with a capital C, and that makes quite a difference in its meaning. It's subtle, that very difference. So typically, curriculum, when written with a small c, refers to everything that we do within the education system. And in that sense, um, curriculum is never neutral. It evokes what I often refer to as the three Ps of education, or three Ps of the curriculum. Politics, policy, and pedagogy. All of those need to be considered when we're talking about the questions that we have for the panel today. You see, educators are more than just factory workers who deliver a curriculum. We actually have a role to play in shaping that curriculum and sometimes reshaping it, and potentially, to quote Neil Postman from, I think, 1977, teaching in a subversive way, or teaching as a subversive activity. And so I think if we move to the term transformation, in this sense, transformation is not a apolitical exercise. Transformation for what? To what? Education in change, or education for some type of transformative change? The concept of backcasting might be very useful here. Where do we want to be? And how do we get there? What is the transformational advantage that digital learning offers? So I'm again giving you lots of questions, not many answers at this point in setting the scene. Um, maybe transformation is not the right word. Other terms we could be talking about is curriculum renewal, curriculum redesign, curriculum reform. What's the difference between these? And then if we are talking about transformation, then I think for me, I work in simple terms, usually and keep things into threes. Uh, John Daniel's um, Iron Triangle for what was originally distance education, but I believe applies to all forms of education, comes to mind. The Iron Triangle is made up of opening up access to education. There's no doubt that new digital technologies have tremendous potential to open up access education to education. The second pillar of the triangle is reduce cost, or cost more generally. You might even think of this as efficiency, often a term we don't use. But there's again no doubt, if we take the MOOC experience, that new digital technologies do have the potential for mass pedagogy to potentially reduce costs. And then finally in the triangle, Daniel's talked about quality or effectiveness. When used well, there seems to be very conclusive evidence that digital technologies can enrich and enable a curriculum that is much more effective, that is better, if you like. But the term digital learning itself does require us to give it some consideration. There have been a number of terms over the years, e-learning, technology-enhanced learning, computer-assisted instruction, if we go back. Are these all the same? What do we really mean? In some respects, currently, the term digital learning is a bit like that air freshener that you spray around. It smells good, but what is it? 
and what's left when the smell dissipates. Um, there are some that argue, um, Shambhain for example, but many others now, that we're actually entering the post-digital era. That we need to be thinking of digital learning as if it is the mainstream, it is the new normal. Do we really need to put the word digital there? Are we just talking about new ways of learning? It's certainly something that uh, George Siemens in his final keynote at the World Conference made a case not for digital, but for much more nuanced understandings of learning. Coming to the end in these opening remarks, um, I think the term relevant also needs to be considered in the key question, why is digital learning relevant for curriculum transformation in higher education? Is it relevant? Well, I think I would say it's actually absolutely essential now. One cannot design a curriculum without considering digital learning in whatever form it might mean. You see, for me, the purpose, the fundamental core purpose of education, which learning is part of, but what we do is about education, is preparing critical thinkers, critical consumers, and critical citizens. And so the digital, digital learning, but the digital more generally, is absolutely crucial to each of those three components of being an educated person particularly now to be an active and contributing member of society. One must have the kinds of digital fluency, literacy, competencies, whichever term you use, in order to help shape and reshape societies that co-construct with others better sorts of communities and societies for the future. I'll stop on that note. Thank you very much, Mark, for, for your very reflective and relevant, I would say, uh, reflection on uh, on this question. I, I, I see some echo. I'm sorry for, for the microphones, maybe somewhere still switched on. Um, I think uh, what you mentioned and Sandra also reflected in her comment in the chat, there is a very important question pending. I don't see further questions still from the from the community here in this webinar. So please post your questions in the chat, and we will have some time for discussions. But these issues that you mark address about curriculum transformation, digitalization, and relevance, and then how how we do with the concept. I think what we have is is a very nice link. Uh, that I would like already to make this bridge to the second reflection from Michael Gable from University European University Association, whom he uh, makes with the initiatives from this um, uh, link with, the, with those universities that are advanced in digitalization and those who still take themselves in position as traditional universities, uh, but might be already well advanced in the digital pathway as well. Uh, so maybe a survey is important for universities on the concept level, uh, which concepts they use, uh, how they think this transformation is going on, and how we can position ourselves uh, today in Europe, and how we move on with the term that also Sandra points um, I'll be here correctly in the chat, uh, how we still discuss digitalization in this context. So I uh, kindly ask the Secretariat now to, to proceed with the Michael Gables reflection on, um, on, on, these, on these items as well in the, in the video that we have from him. I would like to introduce you um, to a new uh, project initiative in which EUA is involved together with partners from university partners from Finland, from Ireland, from Latvia, and from Germany. Um, and we are supported by Eden and Eurasia, the college organization, and also the Irish University Association. Um, the project is about uh, building higher education uh, capacity for digitalization. Um, we realized some time ago that there are a number of in, uh, uh, instruments for other education sectors, such as, for example, the selfie, uh, which helps in higher education institutions to do a self-assessment on where they actually stand and how they could strategically uh, develop.
So uh, we thought we would use the example of the selfie and try to transfer that to a higher education. Um, we also took some inspiration at the HE Innovate, uh, which you probably are all familiar, which also has a, a since a year a page on or a section on digitalization. What we try to do with this is to consolidate and uh, the knowledge and gather data about digitalization at European higher education institutions. And then on that basis to develop this tool for strategic self-assessment, uh, which will encompass all uh, aspects of digitalization, uh, namely learning and teaching, which will be the focus, but we will also include, try to include research, um, internationalization, outreach, and uh, also to some extent management and uh, governance. And the last aspect is then that we do hope not to do that alone, but uh, to involve uh, all or many of you and to use this as a as a as a um, stepping stone for community building through exchange of um, experiences and good practices. Um, the project will start in uh, January next year and will go up to December uh, 2023. It's funded under the uh, Erasmus Plus KE3. Um, the first uh, tasks in the project will be desk research on existing tools. We know already that some are existing, um, but uh, the existing tools usually do not allow you to be used without external support. So I think that will be special about our tool. Uh, for the data collection, we will relaunch a survey that we did already in 2014, and which so far, as, well, as far as I know, remains one of the few sources, compar comparative sources on higher education digital developments. And we will then use this knowledge base to develop a, a, a a tool, the DG Higher Education tool, which we will test with uh, university partners, and then also uh, in the last year of the project, run focus groups with institutions to practice it, to use the tool, but also to further enhance it. Um, the goals that we hope to reach through that, we hope to strengthen um, the development of strategic approaches for digitalization at higher education institutions. We know from data that a lot of uh, is already going on there. Um, there's hardly any higher education institution which does not have digital initiatives in Europe. But we can also see that many institutions are currently starting to or try to develop more systematic and strategic approaches. So it would help them, the institutional leadership, to explore perceptions and perspectives of different uh, members, uh, uh, staff members across the institution. Those who are familiar with the AGE Innovate or with the Selfie will know that feature already. And beyond that, we hope that it will help to enhance and facilitate intra-institutional strategic dialogue uh, and collaboration and build a community of practice and uh, offer uh, higher education institutions then also to work with each other at their own pace through inter-institutional cooperation and benchmarking, which can be built on the tool. So that's it for the moment. You will read more from us in January, February next year. Thanks so much for your attention. I would like to introduce you um, to a new... Uh... Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, the questions that are right now in the chat, starting with the Alistar's message about uh, uh, a little bit high about the need to identify how we develop our pedagogy to enable, enable active learning. Uh, also by Ilya Hazanov uh, about the risk of digitalization in education, the impact on physical, emotional, cognitive processes, and, and for, the, for the questions addressed, these are the questions that have been tackled by Eden European Distance and E-Learning Network practitioners 
but when the European University Association started DG Higher Education project and invited me even to the associate partner in here, and you see how Michael presented the link in the project about surveying universities, higher education institutions, and identifying such practices. Actually, this is the call for uh, good practice examples about the evidence how academic community stands for quality teaching and learning and assessment how we all need good practice examples. Continuous professional development can be the tool to solve these issues, and it is constantly in need for revision. And we need also recognition, new forms of recognition of the academic community members who bring higher education forward. For this reason, today, I'm so pleased that we have good practice examples from two outstanding countries. The first comes Germany. Germany and higher education institutions established higher education community platform to support their champions and innovative higher education teachers. So I would like now to invite Yasmin and Martin. I don't, I don't know which is the order of appearance, but please decide yourselves. And now, please, the floor is yours. You can use the navigation buttons of the slides below. And I would like to ask you to share your experience. Thank you, Irina. Um, Martin and I are very happy to introduce you to um, the HFD Community Certificate today, um, a tool we have developed in the Hochschule Forum Digitalisierung to allow those who are committed to innovative and digital higher education teaching to make their efforts in the field and their qualifications visible. So what is HFD Cert exactly? It's an online platform that depicts and documents its users' activities and individual commitment in their online portfolio by means of a peer review approach and um, gamification elements, such as the earning of e-points and badges. The main objective is to make individual commitment and qualifications visible, especially those developed in non-formal, informal settings. Besides, HFD CERT is also intended as an instrument to allow users to sharpen their qualification or their individual qualification and competence profiles. So there's no prescribed curriculum. Um, users can basically submit any activities um, to the platform and thus set their focus or set their own focus. Also, as all um, profiles are by default open but can be set to private, um, HFD Cert is also enabling um, the exchange between peers, so they can uh, users can browse profiles and um, identify users who have similar interests as themselves. Um, and then I come to the next question. So, who exactly is HFD Cert designed for? The answer is simple. <laughs> it's basically for um, everyone that's committed to innovative, digitally supported higher education teaching. So, teachers, support staff, students especially student teachers. Um, after closed beta phase uh, in December, uh, starting in December uh, 2018, we have launched or rather moved to a public beta phase um, in February 2019 and have right now approximately 520 registered users who have drafted or submitted um, a total of almost 1,500 activities. Besides, we work with higher education institutions who can join HFD CERT um, as partners with their own admin login. We currently have two partnerships, um, one with Aachen University and one with uh, Friedrich Schiller University in Vienna. And then also several other um, institutions that are interested and whom we are in the coordination process with. Um, yeah, after these uh, few introductory remarks, I would hand over to Martin, who um, will tell you more about like how HFT Cert works exactly. With the community behind the storm and behind the participants of European Distance Learning Week. 
Sorry, Martin, your microphone is off. Can you please check the green button on top? It should be green, not gray. Now we cannot hear you yet. Can you hear me? Uh, on top, on top banner, you should see the microphone button. Can you can you hear me now? Okay. All right. Um, sorry about that. Um, so, how exactly does uh, HD search cert work? Uh, it's a very simple. Um, platform basically. Um, after you registered, of course, um, uh, you can submit any activity um, that you've done. Say uh, you've written a blog article about digital learning or uh, you've recorded a podcast or you've uh, restructured, restructured your, your, your teaching in order to include digital, um, digital methods or digital tools. Um, and um, well, you, you submit that activity on HFD cert by just uh, describing it, um, reflecting on, on uh, what you've actually done, and then uh, you put in an amount of, of hours that it took you to actu actually do this. Say uh, you, you, you've done some research for your blog article and, and it took you one and a half hours to write it, and altogether you say, um, yeah, it, uh, it took me eight hours or so. So you put in eight hours and then you submit that activity to HFD cert, where it is then placed in a pool of um, unreviewed activities from where other HFD cert users um, can then um, yeah, um, rate this activity by just uh, verifying it. Say um, you are an HFD cert user who has been um, active on the platform for quite a while and have already collected a lot of, of e-points, um, then you are eligible to just uh, pick one of those uh, um, pool activities and, and say, okay, for me this looks valid. Um, um, once an activity gets um, uh, verified, um, the user who submitted the activity then gets uh, his amount of hours um, as e points on his uh, on his account. So um, once this blog article that took me eight hours to write gets verified, I have then um, eight additional e points on my on my account. Um, after um, the peer review process, um, I get my online portfolio um, together with this new activity. So uh, on my online portfolio, I can um, actually see all those verified activities, which uh, then makes it, um, yeah, a, um, yeah, um, makes it interesting for, for other pe uh, persons to see uh, what, um, what kind of activities I've actually, um, I've actually completed. Um, at every, time, um, I can um, produce a verifiable PDF document um, from my online portfolio. So I just click download and uh, um, this uh, PDF uh, is then um, generated as, um, yeah, as, as an activity um, um, list um, that can be verified by anyone who, um, um, who, who sees the PDF by a verification code. So um, it's actually a very simple process. Um, yeah, so um, I hope uh, I uh, made it uh, understandable how HFD search works and um, yeah, look forward to your, to your questions. Yes, thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you very much, Martin and Yasmin. I think it would be a good idea to post a link mm -hmm. to the portal in the general chat. I'm sure people would see the, the, the impression of it. I've seen it. It's very impressive. 
and a very important step towards uh, preparation on competence-based learning and micro-credentialization and recognition of national practices and champions in higher education. Thank you very much. Now, um, we also, so I uh, yes, so you, so you most probably missed one more slide, which comes from your presentation. Uh, at least now it's on my, on my window and we can see um, HSD SEP uh, community certificate as well. So uh, the second country we invited to participate is Italy. And uh, now I would like to invite uh, Elena Calderola with uh, Giuseppe Ferlo to elaborate on institutional collaboration. Thank you very much, Irina. Can you hear me? The audio is good. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for uh, this uh, invitation to this seminar. And uh, uh, the idea is that uh, we are a ticket, Giuseppe and I, since uh, um, in the previous year, uh, we had an, inter in a, an interesting experience in order to take a picture at uh, the um, national situation about uh, education and training in, uh, in Italy through higher education system and uh, looking uh, also at uh, public institutions Sorry, there is some, some noise, a returning noise. Okay. A higher education institution, but not only, public institution and uh, enterprises, companies, and so on. The idea was to publish uh, a book called Education and Training in the Smart Cities Year, Experiences and Perspectives. And we were able to, um, to write down, to note down, which is the situation going on in Italy. So uh, the idea is that uh, in Italy digitalization is uh, going on, digitalization in higher education system and in public institutions and in companies are going on uh, with uh, different speeds, it depends. And uh, the main um, goals uh, achieved or the idea in, in, uh, in to proceed in this direction is in order to achieve um, soft skills, more soft skills for employability uh, goals, is uh, to prepare a path for students with more flexibility and uh, personalization. Uh, another point was uh, just to prepare from some university uh, student center and learning approach for the student. And the other two main points uh, uh, coming from uh, this uh, survey was that universities are undertaking this kind of experiences in order to find out more intercultural approaches and, above all, internationalization of curricula in order to find a way to exchange courses or experiences between Italians and abroad universities. This is the main picture about uh, why higher education institutions in, in Italy are using uh, digital uh, education uh, to foster this kind of uh, topics. Um, some, uh, European, some Italian universities like uh, Padova, uh, Palermo, and uh, other from uh, Coimbra group were uh, unfortunately not Pavia. <laughs> were able to win the uh, application for uh, European Universities uh, Alliances and the idea for them was in order to start a project to exchange virtual courses uh, and uh, to have the possibilities from one side to exchange students physically, from the other side to exchange uh, um, experiences in uh, digital learning uh, approaches, methodologies and uh, disciplines. Other point was um, in Italy there is a quite a strong experience in order of uh, releasing of digital credential and uh, to um, how can I say uh, valorize this uh, digital credential in the diploma supplement of the students and uh, through uh, the Cineca and the Bestra experience 
we were able to register some uh, degrees in a block cert uh, through an idea coming from the MIT project. In order to recognize in some way, not in credits anyway, with open badge, formal and informal learning. At this point, many universities from uh, Italy, like uh, Bicocca, Bocconi, uh, Padova, uh, Torino, Milano, were able to recognize for their students a particular um, pathways uh, with open badges or certified credential, uh, digital credential, sorry. Uh, so, the idea is that uh, the, Europe, the Italian uh, panorama, the Italian scenario is quite active from this point of view um, because, and this is the final uh, news, uh, just, uh, and then just I leave the floor to Giuseppe, we have two main providers in Italy for uh, MOOCs, uh, from one side EduOpen, uh, supported by 25 Italian universities and from the other side the University of Naples Federica. Uh, through them we have a lot of books uh, released for Italian digital universities and uh, they are quite perfect initiatives in order to allow students uh, to have some um, online digital experiences and uh, have um, uh, the possibility to attend the courses in other universities and ask to gain recognized in digital credentialing. So the idea is, this is the panorama from the point of view of higher education institution, from what is the institutional relationship between universities and other ministerial or um, private or association initiatives, I leave the floor to uh, Giuseppe Pirlo. Um, Pro, uh, Vice Rector at uh, the University of Bari. Please, uh, Giuseppe, the floor is yours. Hi, Elena. Hi, uh, everyone. Hello from the University of Bari. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for uh, your invitation to this very nice, interesting uh, uh, webinar. And uh, yes, of course, uh, from the book we realized with, uh, with Elena, on uh, the uh, education uh, in the age of uh, smart city, we found some um, aspects that have been now uh, focused also at the regional and uh, country level, at the national level in Italy. And uh, some of these aspects have been uh, used in order to define some um, agreement between, for instance, the, uh, the CRUI, that is the Conference of Rectors of Italian University, and uh, the AGIT, that is the agency, the Italian agencies for Italia Digitale. And uh, uh, in this agreement, uh, uh, we try to move uh, together and to move the country uh, toward a common strategy for education uh, in uh, the digital domain in this case. Of course, this is at the level of uh, uh, individuals, of citizens, and also uh, public administration. And of course, uh, through the analysis of, uh, the, of this picture that we that uh, we have tried to realize uh, through the book, uh, um, we uh, emerge that we need uh, a, a common framework. Of course, this is also true at the European level, uh, with a unique uh, academic strategy. First of all, to support the definition of uh, a, um, a, a path that we have to uh, to do all together. And, uh, of course, in order to realize this, uh, uh, this uh, strategy, there are some uh, critical aspects that uh, we have to face. Uh, we have to try how at the best, uh, uh, how to share information, uh, how to share protocols related to um, digital uh, uh, educational activities. Uh, we need to define a standard approach for self-assessment also for quality measurement. These are open, uh, open questions and uh, uh, of course uh, these are not uh, simple technical aspects but are uh, aspects that require um, um, a complete comprehension uh, of uh, normatives and, uh, and laws. And then we have of course in order to spread up with the, the, these opportunities offered by the use of digital in, uh, in education to uh, recognize certification at European level, certification based on uh, um, digital uh, education courses and so on. 
Uh, of course, uh, these are some uh, uh, very critical aspects. And uh, at the moment, uh, we can also say that in order to face with this aspect, we can also use uh, um, more advanced uh, technologies and uh, approach. I am a computer scientist. And so in my domain, I know that uh, if we have uh, um, data uh, large enough to uh, implement uh, uh, advanced algorithm, we can really provide a very advanced form of uh, uh, digital-based education. When I say about the algorithm, I refer to algorithm, for instance, based on artificial intelligence for the personalization of the educational content, but also for adapting them in the best way. So the best approach for, for uh, uh, visualization and for uh, um, uh, domain-specific uh, um, realization of uh, digital uh, uh, materials for, uh, uh, for, for e-learning. So uh, we are moving uh, now in this, uh, in this domain and we are engaging uh, several uh, uh, experimental tests on some advanced uh, uh, technique for a much more uh, uh, effective and uh, high quality um, uh, educational system. So thank you very much. Yes, I can hear you well. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. And uh, I think that the questions that you raised are very, very interesting. I see people who are listening with high attention without a lot of chatting. But uh, these two examples, practices for uh, emergent uh, questions, I think link our different, different members in the European. And uh, I'm happy that, that you raised that here at European Distance Learning Week. Uh, so, so now I suggest that we immediately move uh, to Sandra, uh, President, uh, because Sandra is here to give some ideas on how Eden continues to support the development. Uh, in this area uh, for more than three decades. So maybe some good links to what can be explored here. In uh, uh, Dublin City University, we, we, we were last week, we had Eden Fellow session, and now I see that the questions that come from practitioners are also on the level of rector con Dear Irina, thank you. Can you hear me all? Please. Okay. Um, well, uh, I'm very happy that I can say something about Eden activities uh, uh, relating to this topic. Um, as you can see, Eden is quite busy and very active, uh, as we already uh, have the fourth European Distance uh, Learning Week uh, uh, this week, uh, starting today with this webinar. Um, what I uh, like to just share with those of you who are maybe uh, new to Eden is a few slides about Eden itself. Uh, so um, this is the network uh, with aim to share improve understanding among professionals um, and all others interested in distance and e-learning. And uh, our aim is also to promote policy and practice across the whole Europe uh, and beyond. And uh, as Irina already said, we are uh, more than 28 years old uh, organization. So these are our uh, numbers. Um, what I was thinking uh, to talk about uh, today in relation to even as the added value of digital teaching and learning today, I didn't put all, but some of the, uh, some of the highlights which I found uh, based on the last year uh, conference uh, which I attended uh, and the, the discussions uh, lately. Uh, so uh, accessibility to learning materials and information, uh, issue of open education, innovativeness uh, which we support and uh, foster in uh, teaching and learning. Uh, we already heard today about the credentializing as an one important part uh, uh, in, in formal education, but also in non-formal education, 
and um, availability, availability of different ways of learning and personalized learning pathways. So, um, what, how can we as Eden contribute to some of these topics? Um, our our uh, uh, focus is to uh, uh, enable talking and tackling the most present and important topics, uh, but also bringing uh, even community and all interesting to discuss and to exchange ideas and know-how, and also providing the ground for collaboration and uh, joining of efforts to foster digital education and digital culture for better life and well-being in today and tomorrow's uh, world. So um, we organize a number of activities and for example in uh, physical events like annual conference which we have in June every year, you can see the title uh, of the conferences for the last three years, um, just showing you uh, how uh, wide and uh, how we care about the issues which are uh, at the moment quite present uh, and of interest. Uh, then we have research workshops, we have PhD symposiums, so we also uh, look at the issues relating to the age, age education from the research point of view. How can research contribute uh, as well uh, to uh, issues related in education, but also how to uh, foster, uh, uh, engage uh, the, the young researchers, the doctoral students, to uh, communicate, to collaborate, and to uh, get the more ideas and more information related to, to their work. And also we have open classroom uh, conferences. We have a number of virtual events, like this one. Uh, we have regularly uh, uh, NAP webinars, webinars of uh, network area of academics and professionals. We have a European Open Education Week, which, over, which is organized in March every year. So uh, quite a number of activities through which we try to provide the ground uh, for exchange of ideas and know-how and possibilities to uh, tackle the topics uh, and find the new ways and new ideas, how can we ensure that uh, education is uh, better for all uh, of us and in a way that will be uh, uh, will be satisfying for us. So uh, these are some of the webinars and chats we organize uh, within the uh, NET webinars. Uh, so you can see uh, uh, topics of really high uh, interest and importance. And um, uh, this one in uh, uh, in the bold is the, the webinar which was really uh, the, the num highest in the number of participants. Uh, also a uh, very important part that we found that even, so we have one from one point the, the, the members, the academics and professionals, but on the other point a uh, very important uh, group of people is Council of Eden Fellows established last year. So this is a group of advisor, experts, and professionals uh, within Eden Fellow Group. Uh, the representatives of uh, 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 leadership, uh, previous or uh, current, and uh, um, the aim is to support uh, the Eden uh, with their uh, proposals and uh, uh, and suggestions. And you can see uh, there are three ongoing projects at the moment by Eden Council Fellow, so it's even prevision about the future uh, on open education trend within social political context. Uh, the Eden community, the role is uh, and the responsibility and values of members of Eden community. And uh, Eden 2030, we are all looking quite up to the 2030 um, we had before 2020, now it's 2030, to be prepared to enable uh, the education for everyone uh, in a way which suits the, the each of a person uh, in the best uh, way. So uh, also our aim is to collaborate with number of organizations, other organizations. Uh, so I think uh, in that way we provide, I would say, a global place for uh, all those interested in uh, distance and online education to find uh, some information, to collaborate, to share, 
uh, and to uh, uh, participate in a way it's uh, uh, within any of our activities. Um, the openness of education is a topic which comes out quite often and you can see that uh, we are very active in, uh, uh, in supporting this. But also what I think is very important in a way to provide this addition, if this additional value uh, to digital teaching and learning is our uh, connectedness with European Commission in a way that we try to um, follow what's going on to uh, raise awareness about EU policy, uh, policy initiatives. Uh, we are all member of European Training, uh, uh, Education and Training 2020 uh, Working Group on Digital Education, Learning, Teaching and Assessment. Uh, also, through our communication channels, we are, we are disseminating information about uh, what's going on in European Commission in the relate, in related topic. Uh, so I think uh, this is also good for others to get more information uh, about the policies and strategies and documents uh, which are prepared by European Commission for the European Union. Union. And uh, I would just uh, uh, give a brief review that uh, a Digital Education Action Plan uh, uh, brought in 2018 uh, was also something uh, on on what even uh, is relating to and trying to follow uh, and contribute. Uh, also, Eden was present at both Forum on Future of Learning in Brussels uh, at the beginning of this year and uh, contributing to discussions uh, as well. And also, Eden was present uh, uh, now recently at the second European Education Summit. Uh, so, um, I think that uh, it's very important that if you have such an organization uh, like EDEN uh, to, to get all information uh, which are relevant and to enable uh, through our uh, dissemination uh, communication channels and activities this information uh, to, uh, to everyone. So, we are in position uh, to do that. And uh, lastly, or what Irina already mentioned, last week we had the Eden session at uh, World Conference of, on Online Learning, uh, which was hosted by Dublin City University. And the session was Meet Eden Fellows. Uh, on this picture are just some of uh, Eden Fellows present uh, at the session. Uh, the idea was to talk about the, the topics which uh, we found very important at this moment. And from those four questions, I, uh, um, I want to share with you the question on the creden credentialization was uh, definitely the, the biggest group of people who had interest in this question. Uh, uh, the room was full, even the, the additional chairs were, were asked for. So I think that uh, it is important to even further discuss and contribute to this topic um, and also um, to be a place, uh, to be a space as well, uh, such like even uh, where you can um, get and find this all relevant information. So uh, my, my uh, uh, last words will, will be contribute uh, through this week as well. But uh, so for those of you interested in, join, in joining physically, uh, uh, to be able to discuss, uh, come to Eden Annual Conference in June in Timisoara. Eden Thank can you. support us all here in, in these busy discussions. And Sandra, I, I do hope uh, we receive people with the these uh, questions uh, pending uh, from our uh, webinar today in further Eden events as well. But um, people come, people go, and, and we discuss new issues and, and new challenges, and sometimes we start bringing them from Europe uh, to our member states, to our national and institutional context. Sometimes vice versa, they, they come from institutions and go to European uh, uh, platform. We are so proud to, to have um, Andras uh, in Eden, who continues uh, with Eden um, 
activities and member and community work for, for, for more than two decades. Uh, therefore, one of the most challenging questions uh, we pose today for, for him, Andras, what do you think? What are the key trends in digital learning for research today and uh, the ones that higher education cannot afford but address and uh, think about? Thank you very much, Irina. Uh, let me check if you can hear me. About how they affect the university of tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Um, this is um, one of the most compli complicated titles um, in this um, uh, webinar, and uh, it implies um, a question and a statement. Um, uh, which is uh, which is really exciting and challenging. I try to give my um, reflections. Um, I apologize for um, not being able to uh, use my camera. Um, there is some there is some technical issue. Okay. Um, let me start with um, quoting uh, two um, respected scholars, uh, Olaf Zavatskirister and Som uh, Naidu, who wrote a um, very interesting uh, uh, paper um, in the Distance Education Journal, and. Um, they have uh, identified um, uh, several uh, eras or several phases uh, in the uh, open distance learning research, uh, starting with the professionalization and institutional consolidation from the 80s, then the emergence of professional uh, instructional design, and the systematic use of um, educational technology. Uh, I think we all remember well when the uh, top of the agenda uh, has been the uh, quality issues in um, distance education, and then the uh, student support uh, may be considered as the next um, phase of um, uh, intensive attention in research. The virtual university was uh, one of the uh, preferred uh, issues also for the uh, European Commission uh, programs and also in the scholarly uh, common speech, um, followed by the collaborative uh, learning um, patterns and the interactive learning MOOCs, uh, open educational resources um, area is the latest one, uh, which is still um, uh, actually, of course, um, on the agenda. Um, um, Regarding the um, latest uh, publications, um, which are, of course, pretty many, um, the um, trend uh, seems to be that um, from issues of effectiveness, uh, the, the teaching and learning uh, practices and peer learning um, uh, sharing uh, information and uh, developing the uh, details of the solutions and good practices um, uh, should be mentioned. And um, as related themes, the adaptive learning, micro learning, game based learning, video, personal development, um, and lately uh, much emerging the social presence and um, identity 
uh, in the uh, cyberspace as uh, elements supporting um, online learning. Um, thematically, um, uh, um, statistics which I have seen uh, recently <clears throat> shows that the uh, mostly attended uh, courses um, have their subject as uh, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, um, machine learning, web data extraction, data science, business analysis, career change statistics. So um, you can put them uh, more or less um, in two groups, one of them related to the um, career skill uh, sets, uh, uh, so to say, and the other one as the um, technology skills um, themed uh, courses. Um, the uh, market reports uh, clearly say that uh, preference is strongly increasing for the online courses which are um, providing um, credentials and um, this is an evident link to the uh, presently uh, pretty much uh, discussed and uh, developed issue of the uh, micro learning uh, credentialing uh, um, um, and this kind of things. Um, the European uh, uh, Commission in their uh, Education and Training 2020 uh, actions, which are uh, finishing soon, um, have been focusing on uh, job placement um, um, learning uh, translated to uh, employment opportunities, support of the career guidance, um, the higher appreciation of uh, apprenticeship programs um, supported by the partnerships between um, institution, uh, educational institutions uh, and the uh, corporate sector. Uh, and more and more in a wider sense on the uh, relationships between learning, living and um, uh, society. So uh, what we uh, could call the uh, trans-sectoral um, um, uh, and macro level of uh, uh, learning-related research. Uh, let me uh, quote a um, few elements which I think are important and linked to the uh, theme of this uh, presentation. The study of the European University Association, Learning and Teaching in the European Higher Education area. Uh, I remember very well when a few years ago, um, uh, EUA Secretary General Leslie Wilson um, uh, gave a keynote at the Eden uh, annual uh, conference and then, um, then uh, she explained that the next uh, um, important trend at universities uh, would be that um, uh, learning and teaching are becoming uh, uh, institutional priority. Um, it sounds well, uh, it um, may be not that evident, uh, but um, uh, both the uh, findings and statements of this uh, study, as uh, I trust uh, our own uh, experience, is confirming that um, uh, this is really a um, rearrangement of uh, um, strategic priorities uh, at the institution. and. Um, um, let's mention two elements here. Uh, one of the international cooperation and exchange of experience, and the other the uh, staff development uh, as um, 
uh, core uh, elements of this uh, learning and teaching uh, focused um, approach. Um, <clears throat> Um, well, this is an uh, observable and uh, time by time confirmed trend that uh, the universities uh, integrate um, step by step um, the learning innovation uh, in their um, uh, strategies. Uh, this happens in uh, different ways. Uh, most institutions prefer uh, calling it blended uh, learning, for which uh, uh, there is hardly any um, reliable definition. Uh, and the use of uh, digital um, online um, learning uh, depends uh, so the implementation depends uh, very much, um, understandably, on the type of institution uh, and the target groups, so the uh, learner groups, uh, which uh, may take part uh, in this. Uh, learning analytics is also uh, pretty often um, um, quoted and uh, mentioned as a tool to improve the digital uh, processes. Um, uh, in this study, uh, it is uh, said, which is probably true, that uh, in Europe, um, actually unlike, uh, like in uh, the US or Australia or Canada, the uh, data are gathered, but uh, to a small extent uh, used and followed up. Um, um, institutions uh, are under a certain pressure to make their um, uh, education more uh, flexible. Uh, and in the meantime, however, um, lifelong learning is an uh, uh, ever strong um, uh, conceptual element uh, in the institutional um, strategies, but even in national strategies. Uh, however, the rapid skills ac acquisition uh, seems to be more um, um, urgent or uh, up to date uh, because of the uh, labor market uh, needs and the uh, economic uh, situation. Uh, also, the study says that um, uh, according to statistics, out of 50 higher education uh, systems, uh, 38 um, have a, a strategy for the use of digital uh, technologies, um, which is uh, anyway an encouraging progress. Well, um, this um, figure is not extremely well readable, but uh, what, key, what we can say that um, regarding the use of um, digital learning, uh, the trend is uh, that uh, all elements are uh, um, increasing uh, in their use. Um, and uh, as part of practice and uh, institutional um, uh, strategy. Um, well, um, what um, I was trying to explain was um, um, actually a few highlights that I can see uh, from the trends. Um, a bit um, ironic or perhaps even um, um, cynical addition on my behalf is that I had the honor to attend um, last week in Dublin the World Conference. There was a, a pre-conference um, session of the ICD member institutions, uh, um, senior um, representatives, uh, uh, and um, uh, this is why the sort of uh, irony, I have put this uh, confidential stamp, so not um, 
uh, widely distributed, but I felt a general, um, uh, a general opinion that uh, open distance uh, e-learning uh, at most universities is uh, still considered uh, um, being, you know, kind of uh, isolation and um, second class and second choice and lower quality um, um, judgment about it. So this is still present and uh, when we are making our um, strategic um, plans to improve uh, the development of uh, digital solutions in higher education, then um, then we should um, uh, take this into account. There was an interesting um, uh, suggestion that, well, this is also a communication question, namely, um, um, it is not easy to find a good uh, paper written about the explicit advantages uh, of the online solutions. So there are many, um, you know, questions, doubts, uh, analysis, etc. Um, but uh, an um, encouraging, um, an encouraging, um, you know, study about that what works clearly better. Uh, by using uh, online technologies, um, which is, um, you know, something between the marketing and the scholarly writing, um, uh, would be useful. Mentioned there someone, and uh, there was quite an agreement. Um, we have, uh, however, a sort of um, partners and allies in this, and um, I would say that these are the students. Um, I use this um, mm, figure, I know this is, uh, okay, this picture, um, uh, in which I, I have a deep trust, uh, saying that the students are always ahead. So the, uh, in the higher education um, processes, uh, the, the uh, consumers, final consumers, okay, there may be a debate, but uh, they are always the students, and um, according to their interest, uh, they are using the digital technologies in a, um, a smarter and so more sophisticated way, uh, how um, well often uh, we uh, teachers could um, develop them and um, uh, make available um, for the students. Probably we are speaking much less about the students' uh, interest, role, uh, involvement, and demands than, um, than we could. Thank you very much for your attention. I can hear you very well. Thank you very much, Andras, for very insightful uh, topics and comments. They will be very helpful uh, for our discussion that we will start soon. But before that, I would like to invite um, Margarita, Margarita Teresavicina from Vitova of Magnus University to bring a link here. We, we already speak about the initiatives, uh, ideas that come from professional level and from um, those who are eager for digitalization, digital learning development. But we also live in a society, in a society that is merging nowadays and is very diverse and has specific needs for higher education curriculum. So, um, Margarita, please enlighten us. Thank you, Irina, and uh, hope all of you me can hear me. I'm really very pleased to participate in this panel, and um, I'm very, I was very happy to hear the um, uh, questions uh, of uh, uh, first presenter, Mark Brown, about uh, the meaning of uh, what does it mean 
digital learning, digital learner, what does it mean, uh, curriculum and um, uh, transformation of the curriculum or transformation of higher education. Actually, it is questions what uh, need to be rediscussed many times and in all the presentation it, it was somehow uh, related uh, with these questions. So um, from the, my presentation is from the point of research and I know I am short in time so I try to just, you know, uh, talk about the main issues, main, main, main uh, um, findings uh, about the, character, firstly about the characteristic of digital learner, then about the uh, learner's needs and the transformation of the curriculum, possible transformation. So three uh, ideas. Uh, so finding shows that uh, actually uh, digital learning is different from traditional as we as digital learners would like to have information in smaller portions spend less time on analysis and take faster decisions in the faster world. So acquisition of small pieces of information becomes a characteristic of digital learner. So we can, all of us, we can feel this uh, tendency to focus um, on short news, brief information uh, and to go um, to that less than to go some deep specific reading but this is not that uh, wide versus deep learning allows us allows digi uh, adults to develop and demonstrate ability to see multidisciplinary connection that others may have never seen before um, <clears throat> Researching the find, researching the learner seats, we found that uh, learners prefer different forms of resources, videos, audios, readings in small pieces, uh, online courses with or about a teacher. They also have special, special needs for the virtual learning environment. Uh, because uh, there is a need for suitable time and peace for learning. There is a need to have special uh, communication and collaboration tools, but also uh, they prefer learning environment uh, with the time management, feedback, clear instructions. Teacher also is very important in the uh, for, for learners. So guidance and feedback is one of the most important things. <clears throat> so adults, society members uh, would like to control their time, learn about exciting, existing time limitations and choose space and time for, they, for their uh, possibilities. Also, social networks are very important. Events, seminar, conferences, and connection to other people. So, regarding the universities, learners expect online courses and flexible study programs to be able to connect in their own time, adjusted to work and family life including mobile devices. So how curriculum can be changed to meet learners' needs? There are five important, important items we found. So it is access and flexibility, content, pedagogy, collaboration, assessment and recognition. And shortly, Every 
item, almost every item. So the structure of the curriculum, <clears throat> it should be very flexible and allow different scenarios, including maybe linear, uh, linear learning, individualized learning, self-paced, even modular study program choices. Uh, also content, it could be preferable, multilingual, rich, with the variety of digital resources, with short exercises, short videos, short modular, modular offers, adjustable for flexible learning design, design and self-directed learning. Ah, collaboration. It should be somehow in the curriculum because it's the key issue of the curriculum, as learning and teaching among digital, uh, among digital competent teachers and learners should happen in international, multicultural, collaborative setting, engaging stakeholders, learning communities and interest groups through networking and synchronization with other networks. So collaboration is really important. Of course, pedagogy is, should change, and many people discuss about that. Um, <clears throat> different, differentiation and individualization of learning, supportive and flexible in terms of technology and content. Uh, the, we can talk about the open educational resources separately, but, but uh, this is very important for digital learners at this, at, uh, uh, as open educational resources have a potential of making curriculum self-sustaining in terms of time, cost, and quality. And finally, assessment and, and recognition. It's uh, uh, among the most changing characteristics and innovations awaited. So immediate and instant feedback, quizzes, tests, digital credentialization and certification, recognition of prior learning in formal education, preferably using digital badges. And um, <clears throat> of course, this final one is, requires most efforts, still efforts and research uh, research in the nearest future. So, so how thank you for your attention. For the higher education curriculum transformation in meeting the needs of digital and network society. Thank you very much, Margarita. Uh, this is actually the result of what the society needs. It's, it's their declarations. And um, we promised panel, we, we had questions um, we also wanted short introductions from different initiatives that, that we thought are very important. And I, I thank you all very much uh, for keeping this time limit because we had a lot of insight. And now I would like to, to reopen short discussion. We still have six minutes to complete the session in time. But please do post your ideas in the chat. But also, I would invite each panel member to reflect in the framework of one minute on how do we see curriculum. We might change the word curriculum to digital learning, if that is easier for us. I became observant about Mark and Margarita's remarks about these concepts that we use. So please do state the statement that is closer to your heart. But how do we see curriculum or digital learning in the universities of the future? So I invite participants to post their remarks in the chat. This session is being recorded and we will have the record available after this session. But I will be inviting also one by one now the panel members to give very short uh, statement of the characteristic that, that you that you might name. 
So let's start maybe now the other way around. And Margarita, as you are still connected with Could you please give me? Okay, thank you. Um, so from my from my point of view, yeah, it should be it should be in the West in the university strategies, and um, I think that university is uh, well at least in Lithuania they have to uh, be more open to society and to uh, you know to take into account the need of the people that actually the situation has changed during the past five years and uh, uh, university have the strategy if they want to uh, to have more students more uh, influence uh, on the society so uh, it should be really more open more more based on those criteria that uh, uh, that um, on those needs that the society uh, express well, them and well, that society well, shows to the university well, to change a little bit um, so, all those, uh, yeah. you know, pedagogy, uh, apply digital tools and uh, uh, it's a lot. Okay, but... Thank you, Margarita. Margarita, you're muted. I see Mark posted the uh, uh, if uh, conditional answer. Mark could say of the future issue. Thank you. Yes, sure. Thanks, Irina, for passing the mic to me. Um, if you haven't seen it, I said that for me the answer to the question really depends on what we understand the purpose of a university is in the 21st century. Um, and perhaps we don't all agree on what that purpose might be. Um, there is a tension between a traditional curriculum and the role of universities in some respects as the critic and conscience of society, as distinct from the factories for the, the knowledge economy producing new skills for the 21st century. I don't believe the two are mutually exclusive. But ultimately, I do see that universities have a very important role to create, help shape and create better futures in what is still a very um, inequitable world that we live within. So the kind of curriculum that I would like to see is one that challenges the status quo, challenges some of the uncomfortable truths about the world we live in, in the interests of creating a better future for all. I know that's not particularly precise or detailed, but for me that bigger picture role that universities play and how the digital technologies for better and worse can fit within that agenda is what we should be talking about. As the curriculum or digital learning in the university of the future that you would like to see. Thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, Thank you, Irina. Yeah, I would say um, for me there are three um, three um, pillars. I would say um, first of all, I think future skills. If you think about collaboration, creativity, we've been talking about that. That those are key elements of um, uh, would have to be key elements of future curricula across disciplines. Also, I see a big um, yeah. Um, I see networks, university networks, a division of labor. Um, cross these networks as uh, something that yeah should, would benefit students to not only um, yeah become responsible citizens in a digital world, but also to if you think about their employability, the, the chances they would have to educate um, themselves more to develop uh, competences. I think this is um, would be essential, and also I think and I know in the in the chat we've already. Um, Touch upon more about students as um, as uh, shapers of the digital turn, and I think um, it's important to include all status groups, especially students, as partners, as equal partners, and not only as recipients of um, education, and open the discourse to different groups and have them all. Because I think education, especially in the digital age, is a, it has to be a joint task. So um, I think it's also important to. Um, 
yeah, to integrate students and support staff, uh, teachers, and make them part of the conversation and the yeah, action Lynn, plan as well. Uh, what do you too. think? What what would your uh, statement would look like? Thanks a lot, Yasmin. Uh, I would Yes, I think that uh, as, uh, as we have already seen in the previous presentation, uh, in general, pedagogic issues are not uh, address suitable in uh, digital-based platforms. So it's um, quite normal that the, the perception of students is not always uh, positive. And uh, in many cases, uh, also in uh, our university, they prefer uh, traditional courses. And um, of course, we need uh, to, to work strongly on uh, advanced teaching strategy for adaptivity and the personalization issue in order, uh, I think, to improve the um, interaction between uh, human and machine, uh, the, the, the interaction experience for, uh, in, uh, in education. And uh, I think that university has now plays now a very important uh, role uh, in order to teach students how to learn using digital-based educational system. And this is a very important aspect because uh, uh, we need that uh, our students will become uh, um, uh, digital uh, uh, citizen of the future. And uh, in order to obtain to this, uh, to this uh, goal, uh, for instance, we can try to include in a mandatory way some e-learning courses in uh, the curriculum of the university. This could be done at the European level in order to uh, let our students to become uh, uh, ready for uh, uh, lifelong learning uh, uh, strategies. Giuseppe, what do you think? What will be digital learning in the university of tomorrow? Very interesting, Giuseppe. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we have to conclude our webinar. Um, I think that of a paramount importance, uh, at least for my experience and Italian system, is uh, the production of uh, CPD uh, initiatives in Italy. Because if, if from one side Giuseppe says that uh, students do prefer to attend uh, traditional lessons, maybe it is uh, the reason is because uh, teachers and professors um, uh, were not trained in order to prepare uh, good quality and uh, um, creative uh, uh, initiatives uh, online. So there is a dropout uh, and the perception of uh, low quality and, and this is a general consequence of the fact that there are not efficient and sufficient CPD development in, a, in, a, in Italian context for this. I, I want to say that uh, a lot of uh, good initiatives uh, scattered all over Italy are um, uh, raising and growing, uh, offering uh, very good results. We need to be uh, to enter in a mainstream and obtain a standardization, maybe, and this could be of a paramount and pivotal importance from some rules coming from the minister and, of course, from uh, uh, European Commission. A couple of words from Elena, Andres, and then Sandra to finalize. Yes, thank you, Irina. Um, what I am thinking is that the universities will develop under a strengthening pressure of their environment and their um, uh, stakeholders. And the stakeholders' voice will be more and more uh, loud uh, and uh, pronounced, um, including uh, the, the, the employers and including uh, also the uh, also the students so uh, there were so many um, you know foresight studies uh, in the last couple of decades how uh, education and university should uh, develop and change and this was um, 
uh, not progressing quite like that. So this is a, a slow process, but I think we can uh, identify the uh, impacts uh, and the growing impacts, slowly growing impacts of the stakeholders. And uh, I am also thinking that by the uh, support of the uh, professional and civil communities, uh, this uh, pressure uh, should be strengthened. Um, yeah, um, I don't have much to add to all these uh, already mentioned uh, issues by, by former speakers uh, uh, today. Uh, I think uh, uh, the, uh, it's very uh, high pressure on universities today to uh, think ab again about who are they students actually, uh, what kind of um, uh, education do they provide for whom, and uh, uh, also a very important part is uh, training of teachers to be uh, able to provide new ways of teaching and learning. And I'm very happy that Eden is here, kind of platform to enable uh, all these discussions uh, and uh, know-how uh, to uh, foster uh, educators to learn more, to inform themselves, to be better. And I'm happy, and um, I'm happy that uh, they find Eden as a, as a good space uh, for collaboration. Thank you, each of you and all of you. A very interesting, but very important discussion of today for all of us, for all our institutions, and for Europe, which is digital, digital and learning, which is matured Europe, very collaborative and cooperative, but now should maybe revisiting the way we do our everyday things and uh, see that the processes and learning and, and education meets the needs of all the stakeholders as we discuss. Thank you all of you for your, for your participation in, in this panel and thanks to all participants of the webinar. I would need also to add here that all of you who have not registered to the webinar and wish to receive an open badge can still register and here is the link from Eden Secretariat and you know that agenda is full of open education of sorry of European distance and e-learning webinars uh, this week so please visit Eden website and uh, make your own choices so let's go together thank you very much once again and 